Interesting. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John DeYard, and uh, today I want to talk about something really interesting. It's um, whether or not we should eat with our body type or whether we should eat based on the season. And it's sort of a confusing issue in the Ayurvedic world. Everybody says, well, I'm Vata, so I should eat only Vata pacifying foods. And I'm Pitta, and I should be only eating Pitta pacifying foods. But you gotta also remember that Ayurveda is a science of life. It's about living in sync with the natural rhythms and cycles of nature. So if there was any other system of medicine in the world that should be connected to the cycles of nature, it should be Ayurveda. So you should be able to drop yourself on the planet anywhere in the world and eat Ayurvedically if you're living off the land, right? That would make sense. But what would happen if you were, say, living in Vermont, New England, uh, in January in the 1700s, and there were no refrigerators or trucks, and you had to eat only what you could grow and store. Now, and you were a Pitta body type. Well, Pitta body type is supposed to be fruits and vegetables because they're cooling foods. So the hot body type, we should have cooling foods. So according to the theory, and it's just a theory, that we should eat according to our body type would mean that all Pittas should eat all pitta pacified in food all the time. And that's just a flat out impossibility because there is no fruits and vegetables in Vermont in January in the year 1700. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, it's also really interesting when I first started practicing Ayurveda many years ago in the 1980s, Ayurvedic doctors would come here and they were sort of like in, in, in the 90s and so on, they were making comments like it's really interesting how in the West you've, you've attached the diets to the body type, which was like a new thing for them. Because in India they didn't do that. They just ate with the seasons because that's all there was. You didn't have a choice not to eat with the seasons because that's when the food was available. That's how we did it for thousands and millions of years, eating with the seasons. So the authority on this issue, because a lot of people, when I wrote my book, The Three Season Diet, I was ridiculed by saying, oh, this book is crazy. You don't eat with the seasons, you eat with your body type. You're, he was so wrong. But let me just cite the authority on this issue, which is Charaka Samhita, the number one primary Ayurvedic textbook written about 2,500 years ago. And here's what they said about seasonal eating. A person with knowledge of food and activities based on the seasons and having the discipline to practice them in that season or in these seasons stays healthy. A person whose knowledge, who has knowledge of a wholesome seasonal diet but does not have the discipline to practice them gets a disease. Another, another quote was that another, a balanced diet and routine with the seasonal rhythms of vata, pitta, kapha, because they change with the seasons, winter is vata, pitta, summer, kapha, spring, that the, that the sea, that, so the, the balanced, um, let me start again, this is Charaka, balanced diet and routine with the seasonal rhythms of vata, pitta, kapha, your strength and digestive fire or agni, they all change with the seasons, is a maintenance for health and the prevention of disease, right? So this is the authority saying, you gotta do it with the seasons. It's all about eating with the seasons. And I'm gonna tell you why the science backs that up in just a minute, so stay with me here. But it's not about the body type. Now they do, Charka does make an exception to the rule. It does say that if for, for disease situations, that the diet can be modified according to the imbalance or possibly the body type. So what happens in real life is you, and this is what I've been proud, how I've been practicing in my patients forever, is you eat with the seasons because that's what's available if, historically. And it just makes sense if you're gonna to try to follow an ancestral line of thinking that our ancestors ate X, Y, Z, then we should, then that would obviously be seasonal because they had no other choice, right? So that would make sense. Um, but then you also have your body type which is sort of, a, in a sense, a reflection of your ethnicity. You know, back in the ancestral times, there were no mixtures of genetic ethnicities as there are today. So a lot of folks come from Asia. They can't do dairy. They just don't have the genes to pull it off. So they just never had it in their diet, and they don't do well with it. 
so they shouldn't do dairy. So the body type sort of reflects this kind of this ethnicity that allows people to have different genetic predispositions, likes and dislikes, and the ability to digest different foods, right? So that does make sense. So what you would then do is you would eat in a seasonal way. Everybody, lots of pizzacafas, all should eat, you know, vata pacifying foods in the winter and pitta pacifying foods in the summer and kapha pacifying foods in the spring. Why? Because in nature, in the winter, the coldness and dryness increases. And nature's response to not letting that dosha accumulate and potentially aggravate and cause worry and anxiety and constipation and dryness is to give you foods to calm it down and answer to that, which is basically, you know, soups and stews and nuts and seeds, heavier, warmer foods to antedate the cold antidote the cold and dryness of winter, right? And in the springtime, when it's rainy and muddy and heavy and congested, if you look out the window, there is no heavy food. If you want to eat pasta, you'd have to wait till fall because it doesn't get harvested until fall. So if you look outside in the spring, which we're in now, you're looking at a very austere, kind of starchy-free, carbohydrate-free diet. There's root vegetables, maybe some early spring greens. It's austere. It's a calorie restriction time of the year. It forces us to burn fat, right? So this is what happens in the spring. And in the summertime, when it's hot, uh, the heat accumulates all summer long. It aggravates at the end of the summer, and nature gives us apples and fruits and pomegranates and watermelons and all these cooling fruits and vegetables to help dissipate the heat. Taking it one step further, which is so beautiful, is that spring is also the antidote for winter. So winter is cold and dry, and if you don't eat the right foods and get out of whack, nature's got you covered, but it's gonna give you warm, wet spring to moisturize you from the dry, dry winter. And spring being wet and heavy can become too mucusy, and nature's got an answer, an answer for that too, which is summer, which heats you up and dries out that mucus. And the antidote to hot and summer dryness is winter, which is cold and dry. But in the winter, from hot and dry in the summer to cold and dry in the, in the, in the winter, the dryness accumulates. And nature really recognized that, why should why we have nuts and seeds and all the heavy foods in the winter, but spring is the rain season to kind of give you that moisture that you desperately seek. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So you would do that, eat seasonally. Of course, we have a, a free uh, seasonal eating guide that we produce every single month. We've been doing it for years. We have thousands and thousands of people sign up for it. Every month you get in your inbox, recipes, grocery lists, superfoods for every month of the year for the entire year. It's all for free, there are no strings attached. It's free so people can start to you know look at that and go, oh, here's some foods that are in season in January, in February, March, whatever, and then begin to start eating more off of those lists. Think about eating more of the foods that are in season as opposed to what you shouldn't eat. Think about what you can eat more of. It's a better way to go, right? And, and, um, and then you have your body type. So then you would then overlay your body type on top of that seasonal eating message, which says, okay, I'm a pitta body type, um, which means that in the summertime, I am gonna be more vulnerable to getting overheated. Nature gives me cooling foods, which is great, but if I'm also adding spicy food and alcohol and kombucha, which is you know lactic acid fermentation, it's very heating, uh, coffee, wine, cheese, beer, you know, spicy food, that can increase my pitta, so I have to be very careful not to let that happen if I'm a pitta body type. So my overlay would be, okay, I eat with the seasons, but in the summertime, I gotta be careful. If I'm pitta kapha, I'm pitta kapha, so I have to be careful of getting congested and allergies in the spring and overheated in the summer. So those are the two seasons that I watch out carefully, and in the winter, I get to you know relax a little bit. Still eat with the seasons, but I don't have to be so rigid because I don't have my body type working against me. If you have a lot of vata, and you're eating a lot of cold foods and smoothies for breakfast that are with ice in them, in the winter time, a cold body type and a cold season eating cold food, you're gonna become cold and vata aggravated. A kapha body type in the kapha season, a mucus making body type in the mucus making season, eating mucus making foods like carbs and pasta and cheese and things, which aren't really available in the spring, will just create more mucus and aggravate that. So you have to have that all plugged in. 
So then from the scientific perspective, so the point, the goal of this whole lecture is to say, yeah, we have been doing it wrong. And when you did, when, when, and we have the body type questionnaires and it fits really well on a sidebar in a magazine, you find out what your type is and you go, okay, I eat this food, I smell this aroma, I drink this tea, everything's cookbook, cookie cutter, way to go. It doesn't really work that way, just so you know. And Charka, the authority, not me, the authority is very clear that if you don't eat with diseases, you get disease, is what they basically, basically say. And the prevention of that disease is exactly uh, eating in sync and having activities in sync with the seasons. Now, <clears throat> here's some of the science. Studies show that the bugs in the soil change from one season to the next. Dramatically in the springtime, which is nature's near, there's a massive microbial surge about to take place in the soil. The foods you pull out of the ground in the early spring are going to be loaded with bugs specifically to inoculate your gut with the right bugs for the right season, to decongest you in the spring, dissipate heat in the summer, and build immunity in the winter. The microbes support function in your body according to new research. In addition to that, there's bugs in the springtime called actinobacteria that are really good at fat and fiber, which helps you burn more of those kind of heavier winter foods. In the summer, there's foods for carbohydrates. There's bugs that help us digest carbohydrates better. Well, that's what's being harvested in the summer. At the end of summer, all the grains and the fruits are being harvested. And the, bac the bacteria deets are very pre prevalent and naturally increase at the end of the summer. So our microbes and our gut change to do carbs in the summer and fat and fiber in the winter, in the spring, which is pretty cool, right? Pretty interesting. In addition to that, amylase, the enzyme for starch, increases in our bodies in a seasonal way at the end of the summer. It's not really that prevalent in your body in the spring when there's no starches to be had. They're all end of summer harvested, right? That makes sense. The parasympathetic digest nervous system increases in the winter. Why do you need st stronger digestion in the winter? To break down the meat and the heavier, more dense foods that store through the winter. The only thing you're gonna eat in the winter is stuff that you grew in the summer that was dense enough to store and make it not go bad during the winter. Um, and fermented foods as well, which, are, were, you, which were used originally to, to preserve their vegetables, but they also have lactic acid fermentation and they heat the body up, really important in the winter time, right? Makes sense. Also, serotonin and dopamine receptors are light sensitive. So we get lots of them in the summertime when we feel really happy. But in the winter, when we don't have them, we get a little bit depressed. And that's, you know, that's part of the, the, the circadian rhythms. But nature had a plan for that too. Nature gave us more melatonin because of the darkness, which we don't do because we have light all night long sometimes. We have herbs that are called brain-derived neurotopic factors like ashwagandha and bacopa that build brain cells and support mood stability and they're harvested in the fall for winter eating. All part of the, the balancing of these, of these receptors for dopamine and serotonin to keep the mood stable. This is a fascinating discussion. Um, please sign up for my free, my free seasonal eating guide you get all this information free. Every month I write an article and get updated with the newest research so you get kind of tuned into that. Of course, at our, at our website at lifespot.com, there's an article specifically about this with the quotes from Charaka at lifespot.com. It's, it's, I think the article is called, it's right on the homepage right now, and it's called something like, um, should we eat with the seasons or your body type? And the answer is with, your, with the seasons, okay? Body type's an overlay. It's not the main thing. I hope that helps solve some problems for you. Please read this quote from Charka, so don't blame me. It's not my discussion and my opinion. It's the authority, and it's with Charka, and it's the Ayurvedic rule that we broke in America because it was just easier to tie it all to the body type questionnaire, which works great in magazines, and it became sort of a simple misrepresentation and misinterpretation of what Ayurveda is really trying to tell us. Okay, guys, so get those bugs in the right season because it makes a huge difference in terms of your long-term health and well-being. All right, thanks for listening. See you next week. I'm Dr. John Vigart.